This past year has been filled with uncertainty, but if anything, it's made me all the more grateful to have the Westerlies, to have each other, and to have the music that we can keep falling back to. I think that the four of us have really been able to um, adapt pretty quickly to this, this new era. We've discovered these whole new dimensions to ourselves and to the band that we didn't know were there before the pandemic, and I think we're better for them now. Looking back on it, this past year was full of new milestones for the group. You know, we started this year pre-pandemic, and uh, we were going to the International Trombone Festival. I think it was my junior year of high school, I entered into the uh, International Trombone Festival classical solo trombone competition for high schoolers, and I didn't get past the preliminary round. I got rejected on the spot, so I wasn't even invited to go to the festival itself. So it felt very validating to me to be able to return to the festival as a guest artist and a masterclass presenter among all these trombone heroes. As the summer came to a close, we hit the ground running with a bunch of recording projects, the first of which was our our new album with Theo Bluckman, entitled This Land, which we had the, the privilege of debuting at Westerly's Fest a couple of years ago, and we've just been living with this music for two years now, so it's, it's so great to finally get it onto the record. I'm excited for the world to hear it. And then the Flea Foxes recording session was, was such a fun time. We went up upstate to New York to record for a few days, and um, I've been a big Fleet Foxes fan for a while, so getting to see um, sort of inside the creative process was, was uh, really fascinating and really, really incredible to, to be a part of. That was a special experience because on, on the first record we were only featured on a couple of tracks, but this new record gave us the opportunity to come up with arrangements that we felt brought our own unique personality as a band to the songs. This past year, we had a new type of collaboration, a collaboration with an organization in Seattle called Common Power. They provide civic on-ramps for ordinary people like you and me to do extraordinary things by coming together and fighting for the progressive causes that we know we need in this world and in this country. Before the pandemic, Riley and I were lucky enough to accompany them on a trip to Richmond, Virginia, wherein we did a bunch of get out the vote activities leading up to the uh, state elections there back in October. Um, since the pandemic, obviously in-person canvassing hasn't been as much of a possibility, so we had to get creative. And we created a concert series called Grassroots Activism. A fully online concert series, wherein Common Power provides us with a platform to make it really easy to contact elected officials across the country to advocate for a wide variety of causes. But most importantly, and this is my favorite part, we curate a series of guest artists to come in and do virtual solo sets. So while we're doing all this uh, advocacy and, and writing these officials, we also get to listen to this incredible music. Practice what you preach. Shout out to the Westerlies, our partners in good trouble on this the day after real change in America. Real change that wouldn't have been possible were it not for folks like us who 
aside from their their day jobs, decided to to do more over these past few years and get involved in the civic change that needed to happen in this country. Grassroots activism was born from frustration and fear, but also hope and determination for the future. And we did it. We did it, y'all. And there's more to do. So looking forward to doing more with you. Let's go. This past year, we released Wherein Lies the Good, our third album as a quartet. The title track is an adaption of an incredible piece of music by Seattle's very own Robin Holcomb, um, originally a solo piano piece that we adapted for the four of us. That project was really special for a lot of reasons, one being that we finally got to bring this piece by Robin and our arrangement of it to the world. Um, the other reason that record is so special is that it's the first record we've made with Chloe Rollins in the band. And Chloe's just brought so much to the music and so much to our ensemble sound. One of the most exciting parts about it was the fact that it's the first time that I've ever had my own original music released on an album. And um, that feeling of having um, my music officially released into the world was, was really, um, really amazing. It's been incredibly rewarding to see the reception of the music, both from fans, from peers, and from the critical response that the record has garnered. Perhaps most excitingly is in the past few months, the song Robert Henry was picked up by NBC slash MSNBC for a new Get Out the Vote PSA that they have been running on primetime nightly for the last several months. This year's election is gonna be a little different. Instead of one election day, we now have a voting season. That special time of year when polls can open weeks before election day. When your mailbox can become a voting booth. When how you vote is just as important as who you vote for. How, when, and where to cast your ballot depends on your state. Tis the season to be prepared. This year, plan your vote. Wesley's Fest 2020 was bigger than ever. Looking back on it, you know, it couldn't have gone better. We had Celise Henderson, we had Phil and Sarah Kay, we had a night with Robin Holcomb, our friend Haley Hendricks made a surprise appearance, along with our Seattle friend Troy Osaki. And we also got into schools, worked with hundreds and hundreds of students over the course of the week uh, to show them everything we love about music, improvisation, listening, all these values that I think are so valuable in the band room, but also valuable in any classroom. Getting to see the looks on their faces every time we um, were working with them, of, of just them being excited, it made me remember the time back when I was that age, just so fresh and new and excited about music. Even though we have to get up at 5 a.m. and be in schools all day, just the energy that the kids give and the fact that they are present and engaged at six in the morning to play music is just amazing. Well, hello there and hello to West Feliz fans. My name is Jake Bridgman. I'm the director of bands at Edmonds Woodway High School in Washington State. And I just am here to shout out the Westerlies. This is an awesome, awesome group to have visit my students at Edmonds Woodway High School. They are uh, engaging and informative and most of all, probably inspirational. The visit from the Westerlies has transformed our way that we make music. They were so gracious the last several years to come out and offer their time and talent with our students in master classes uh, with all kinds of ensembles. I want to shout out Andy and Chloe and Riley and Willem for all the amazing work that they are doing. 
and for their enthusiasm and youth that they're putting into chamber music. It's transformed my concert band program. We're doing much more chamber music now and uh, finding other groups that are inspirational. And I just want to say thank you to the Westerlies. And if you've never uh, had the experience of being near the Westerlies or getting to hear them play or getting to see a masterclass where they teach, I highly recommend it. Thank you very much and have a great day. When the pandemic hit, we had just put out our new album, Wherein Lies the Good, and we had a whole album tour planned, and then all of a sudden you realize that uh, everything you planned is off. I definitely remember that feeling of paralysis for a second, of what are we gonna do? What should we be doing right now? What can we do? I, I remember one specific moment when we all got on Zoom and tried to play at the same time, and it just freaks out and sounds like a chainsaw going through a tuba. We started experimenting with various different platforms and tools for remote collaboration. I've rigged up this crazy system where I can compensate for the latency created by the internet and make everyone sound in sync. So I remember very clearly the first time that it worked and everyone played together in real time and it sounded like the Westerlies. And it had been three or four months since we had actually been in the same room playing and it was such an overwhelming emotional experience to feel that again and to feel that live energy with each other. Being a nonprofit allows us the opportunity for when we see a space for something that we think this world needs, whether it's the world of brass, whether it's the world of chamber music, whether it's democracy at large, or the way that this country values the arts or values its musicians. If we see an opportunity, we're able to chase it, we're able to pursue it, and it is thanks to the support of our community and thanks to the support of our donors that we have the freedom to do that. And with that freedom, I think we try to be as fearless as possible in terms of charting a course for the group and creating a model for what being an ensemble looks like in the 21st century.